Hey, welcome to another episode where I explore Bitcoin technology. In today's video, we're going to look at the blockchain. And trying to explain what the blockchain is. And if you're anything like me, you're going to scream if you see another explanation that says the blockchain is a public ledger. Uh, when I was learning about the blockchain, that's all I kept coming across. And honestly, that explanation didn't help me at all because I, I was trying to understand what makes the blockchain truly unique and why couldn't I just use a database if it's a public ledger? Uh, I could use any kind of distributed database technology which exists today and is extremely robust. And I uh, really wanted to get a grasp of, of why the blockchain is different in that regard. And it took me a while because, like I said, everybody was just equating it to a public ledger and really didn't get into how it truly works and what makes it unique and, and different to a database. So that's what I've set out to try and cover in this video. So uh, this is going to be kind of a, I'm going to draw to explain my point. I think in this case, truly a picture is worth a thousand words, as they say. So let's get started. Uh, I think one of the things that makes understanding the blockchain appear daunting at first is that it by itself is not complicated, but it does require some outside knowledge of different concepts. Um, you need to know things such as hashing. Now, don't worry, we're not going to get into the mathematics of hashing, etc. But I do need to take a few steps back and start at that level where we talk about what a hash is. And, and that'll help you understand what a blockchain is, because you really cannot grasp the uniqueness of a blockchain without understanding at least just the basics of what hashing is. So that's where I'm going to get started. And uh, I hope you're going to enjoy enjoy this as much as I am putting this together. Okay, so let's take a look at, at what a hash function really is. And we, we need to understand hashing to understand what the blockchain is. Now, this is not really very difficult if for a moment you kind of suspend a little bit of belief um, as to how it happens, but just understand what a hash function actually does. Now, a hash function basically takes some form of input and produces a hash. So, for example, um, if I hashed uh, the let the word hello it would give me some form of unique hash from that word it's a mathematical process that it goes through to hash the word hello and if I'm for ex example using a 256 bit hashing algorithm I'm going to get back a unique 256 bit string and that could look anything like a 1 C 2 F a etc etc uh, up to 256 bits long. Now what makes this unique when we're using this form of hashing that's being used by the blockchain is anytime I hash the word hello it will return the exact same string. It will never change. That is what we call a deterministic hash. It's always going to produce the same output for the same input. Now, another attribute or trait of this is that you can't go backwards. Once I have this 256 bit hash, I can never go backwards to find the original source of what that hash was, what it represented. So since this is a deterministic hash, it's always going to produce the same hash for the same input. Now, if I go in and change just one letter in this hash string, let's say that uh, I changed or added or deleted a string, um, but let's just go ahead and say that I changed this L to an I, that will now produce a completely different hash string. And whatever might change, this might be A1, C, 3, F, A, C, whatever that might be, it's gonna change the hash string just because I changed one character in this hash. Again, so any input is always going to equal the same output. 
you can only go one way you can't reverse compile this and just the slightest change of a single character in this hash string will produce a completely different 256 bit hash now a hash can be as simple as just hashing in one character or I could hash the entire library of Congress there is no limit to what I can throw into a hash function but my output is always going to be this 256 bit string so it doesn't matter how short it is or how long it is it's going to always result in a 256 bit string so people use hashing for different uh, for different reasons got a lot of use of course in cryptography uh, but one of the you know things you can use is to determine if anything has changed because if you give me a word document and I hash that document I'm gonna get some unique 256 bit string so that validates that that document is as it was at the time that I hashed it let's say that you take that document and it might be a 50 megabyte document it doesn't matter and you change a single character in that document so this was a, a word document and you just changing one little character in that document it's going to result in a brand new 256 bit string so a simple change will prove I can just rehash a document when you send it back to me and if that string does not equal the original hash that means something has changed so it's a great way of making sure that nothing has actually changed you can just compare the hashes of two documents so that's the basics of what a hash function is and that's all you need to understand at this level of understanding the blockchain so now with that basic understanding out of the way let's go forth and look at how the blockchain works um, of course it is a, each block is a series of transactions so if we say that this is a block and we'll record a series of transactions in here now a transaction like I said is a paid B5 Bitcoin with a bunch of other data but for for illustrative purposes let's just go ahead and, and record transactions as some arbitrary data um, say one two three four five six seven eight nine so let's just say that each block is only going to store three transactions yeah obviously you can store a lot more and you've probably seen the debates of, of increasing block sizes etc so so we have these three transactions what the blockchain technology does and I first want to talk this talk about this without the context of mining um, you've heard of Bitcoin mining and it's a fundamental aspect uh, as it relates to the blockchain for something we call proof of work but let's not complicate it right now let's just talk about simply how the blockchain works with the hashing function that you learned about previously so this is three transactions in a block so let's say that I hash these three basically I'm going to hash that one and that one all together you've already learned from a, a hashing function that it's going to take some input and it's going to give us a unique output with 256 bit hash so let's just say arbitrarily that this hashes to a 250 bit string but we'll just use the first three characters so it it, uh, it 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 hashes to a1c and another another set of characters and I'll just abbreviate it to a1c so so that's all great and well and those three transactions go into a block and we hash it now the concept with the blockchain is we start the second block and we add more transactions to that so let's just say that this one contains three transactions uh, two 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 three 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 and four 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 it's three arbitrary transactions now what's interesting for the second block we're actually going to copy over the hash value of the previous block and that one was a one C and total 256 bit characters you can see that basically I just input and, and copied over that hash and that's what allows this block to have a link almost to the previous block now here's where it gets kind of interesting and this is really the fundamental concept here uh, of the blockchain to get the hash of this block at the bottom here this is where you know I, I, I want to store the hash I'm going to hash the three transactions just like we did but I'm also going to add 
the original hash. So it's going to be that one plus that plus that plus that. So I'm going to hash all of those together and that's going to give me a new hash such as B2F and of course 256 characters. Likewise, let's just go ahead and create a third block. And in this one, let's say the transactions is 789257832. I'm going to copy that hash from the previous block, B2F. And then of course, I'm going to hash this entire thing together and I'm going to get some, some other arbitrary hash, CF2A and 256 bit characters. And so of course, that's kind of linked as well. So in this manner, we keep creating blocks and each block has these transactions in it and we link them together with these hashes. So here's where it gets kind of interesting. Let's say that you want to go ahead and cheat the system and change one of the transactions occurring earlier in the blockchain somewhere. So you come into this first blockchain and, and you want to modify this transaction. So let's say you change just one character in this transaction. And re remember what we said about a hashing function. The moment you change a single character, the hash changes. So let's just say I change this to 458. What happens now is that this hash of this hash of 123 plus 458 plus 789 is going to result in a different number. It's going to result in a different number being generated here. In fact, when I add these up and hash them, let's say that I get F2D as the new hash value. So guess what happens? This has now broken the blockchain because this hash up here is no longer pointing to that previous block. So you would have to come in and also surreptitiously change on the next block that hash to F2D to make that stay valid. But now what happens? This hash gets messed up because F2D plus 222, 333 and 444 is going to result in a different hash here. This might result in AF3C as, as its hash. And once again, then that breaks this link because this one no longer points to the right previous block. So you would have to come in and modify that hash to point to the right block as well. And then once again, of course, this hash breaks. So you can see that just coming back and changing a single character somewhere up front or early on in the chain is going to cause a trickle down effect that's going to have to permeate through the entire chain. And so you would have to modify every block in the entire chain. So that makes it very difficult to do so. Now you could make the argument, yeah, so what? So I can come in and change every one of those. So, so it's true, you, you know, potentially, theoretically, you could come in and change uh, every, every one of those nodes. So that's why besides being distributed, you'd have to change it on, on multiple nodes at the same time. And we'll talk about that later. Um, but we add a mathematical difficulty for you to come back and actually change all of these. And the way we do that is with a concept known as proof of work. And that's really what Bitcoin mining is. So let's uh, just expand upon this knowledge of this blockchain and this hashing. And let's add the uh, proof of work. And you can see why we add the proof of work. It's going to make it much harder for you to come in and then try and change the entire blockchain past a certain block. So let, let's expand on our example and add proof of work. And then you'll get a great understanding truly of the blockchain and how mining works. So in the same example as, as earlier, let's um, continue uh, with, with a different block structure. Same way as before, we have our block and we'll add transactions, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And we are gonna hash it to get some number over here uh, in, 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 our, in our hash field. But we're not gonna allow you to just hash these three numbers together. In fact, we are gonna say that you must have a random some number here that when you hash all of these plus this random number your hash value that you start here it must start with four zeros 
just as an example. And then it can be whatever the hash is, F234. So we need to hash these together. Now we saw in our previous example up here that the hash of those three result in, in a hash of A1, in, in, a, in, a, in a hash of, uh, let me wipe, in, in A1C, that does not start with four zeros. Um, so we have to find something that's going to start with four zeros and then give us a hash value. So the way we do this is we'll take one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and let's hash it with the number one. And we'll see what the hash results over there. So we'll hash it with the number one and see what hash results over here in, in our hash field. Uh, let's just say that when we take these three numbers and we plus one and we hash it, the answer is F23 something. Doesn't start with four zeros. Okay, so scratch that. Let's try two. Now the hash is GAC123. Okay, doesn't start with four zeros. Scratch that. Let's try number three, etc. So you get the idea. We're going to just try different numbers until the resulting hash of hashing the entire block with this with this random number here results in something that gives us four zeros up front. So let's just uh, let me bring in the little eraser here, uh, clean up a little bit. Let's just say that um, we're able to find out that go back to the pen that it happened to be that if I added the number two eight seven six five four three two one nine nine that that was the magic number that when all three of the or four of those were hashed together I ended up with a hash that was zero 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 a f two c and the 256 bits so it took this kind of mysterious number to find a hash that equals four zeros. Uh, this number is what we call a, a nonce. Um, don't have to worry about too much about the name, but we call that a nonce. So let's go ahead, just as we did in the above example, let, let's go ahead and create another block. Um, and again, in this transaction, so we'll copy over the, the hash from the previous block, which one that started with four zeros, A, F, two, C. And then we'll have our transactions in here it was two, 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 three, 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 four, four, four. And again, now we have to hash that one plus, 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 plus some mysterious number to end up with a hash that starts with four zeros. So again, we'll start at one, then we'll go up to two and we'll keep going up until we find some magic number that's going to hash us. That's a hash starting with four zeros. And let's just call this, uh, we'll just say F4G2. And this number, let's just say, you know, it was 89254321. Some, some long number that we tried every combination up to there to find a hash that gave us the, a hash starting with four zeros. And then, of course, we can just complete our chain. It's the same concept. I'll copy over the previous hash from the, from the previous block. F four six two, so those are, are linked, linked, and we have our transactions here: seven eight nine two five seven eight three two, and we're going to hash with some nonce or, or random value, um, A B C, and that's going to ultimately give us a hash starting with four zeros, and we get some hash value. So we just modified from, from that earlier example into a more complicated one where you have this, this, this nonce or, or random value that causes you to have to hash with four zeros up front. So now what happens in the same example as earlier, you want to surreptitiously come in and modify the transaction. And in our example, you changed this one to an eight. And so now what happens is when you hash all these together, of course, as you've already learned, this hash is going to change and we're going to get some new value, which probably isn't even going to start with four zeros because it was, it was a very long shot of getting one that starts with four zeros. And this new one is 8F2G, etc. And as usual, so now the blockchain breaks, that one's wrong, this chain breaks, that number changes, this one breaks, you've broken the entire chain. Now, for you to come in and just update 
this hash with your new hash you can't do it because it doesn't start with four zeros so you would need to go back and find a new nonce that when you hash it you get four leading zeros now to find this number is a lot of work this is what bitcoin mining is you have millions uh, of processors around the world that try and find this unique number that generates a hash starting with four leading zeros so you as a single individual there's no way you can come in and quickly hash find another uh, hash that's going to result in four zeros four leading zeros now notice not only do you have to do it for this one let's say you were lucky enough to find a new hash that resulted in four leading zeros and you move it over into here you now have to come in and do the same thing here and find a new nonce that's going to hash to four leading zeros um, it's a lot more work and then you have to do it again on this block etc all the way up the blockchain and there's no way that you'll have the processing power to do this proof of work finding out this mysterious nonce or random number every time that's going to result in four leading zeros and that's what we call proof of work it's a lot of processing power there's no way that you can modify through the entire blockchain with sufficient uh, hash power to get there and that's fundamentally what mining is it's finding this 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 number um, that would result in the a hash starting with four zeros now we start making the difficulty more and more as the blockchain grows you know maybe instead of starting a hash with four leading zeros um, the difficulty changes and we now have to find a hash with five leading zeros um, so so we can keep changing the difficulty as as the blockchain grows in other words the proof of work gets harder and harder now the final thing just to, to to wrap up that that basic level of understanding is that that blockchain is distributed across multiple nodes across the world so you and I can run a node on our computer it's just a computer that's running a specific approved software so we have all these computers around the world and literally millions of them or potential for millions of nodes that can all be interconnected and each one of these have a full copy of the blockchain on them so if you want to modify the blockchain and cheat by changing one little transaction value you have to come in and not only do the proof of work to maintain this entire blockchain you also have to do it in a distributed fashion across all these nodes so you can see it's just a truly distributed and decentralized technology that because of this proof of work we stop people from being able to go back and actually change transactions um, as that will invalidate almost every block on top of that since that node um, and the other nodes can quickly validate that when they look to see whether they should accept this new block if it doesn't start with four leading zeros as an example it will reject that block so it's going to be very very difficult for you uh, basically impossible to go back and change anything back in the blockchain so that's the fundamentals of a blockchain uh, of course there's a lot of details there that uh, I've, I've omitted but uh, hopefully it's uh, rather easy enough to understand it at that level i know this was a fairly long video but uh, that's the blockchain for you and at some point you just have to get in and, and dive in um, and then start ap appreciating really the uh, the vision and and the engineering principles behind that and what's really starting to revolutionize the way we can record information in a distributed and decentralized fashion so hope that was helpful i uh, look forward to your comments and uh, if there's any more uh, videos you want on specific topics just let me know otherwise uh, happy blockchaining and i'll see you in the next video